Okay, everybody, welcome to episode two of our new podcast. Hmm. We thought if you missed last week, you might want to hear some highlights. So here we go. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah, perfect. All right, uh, maybe we should move on. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the next show. Here we go. Episode two. Hmm. So, back to Ringo Starr. You haven't brought him up yet. No. uh, What do you know about him? I know a lot about him. I can't wait. First of all, he wasn't the first drummer in the Beatles. No, that's true. Okay. The first drummer in the Beatles was Pete Best. Yes. Right? Yes. Are you astounded (laughs) that I I know that? I am astounded you actually got it right. You're gobsmacked, aren't you? I am. My smack. And he gobsmacked. Yeah. And he was their drummer when they were called the Quarrymen. That's right. Goodness me, I'm two for two. <laughs> now, the problem was with his name, yeah. it insinuated that he was the best person in the band. Well, or at least the best person called Pete in the band. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, Pete Best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You're okay. keeping up? Yeah, no, I thought we were on Ringo, but go on, yeah, Pete, good. We, we're getting to Ringo. Yeah. Because Ringo hadn't joined the band yet. No, he was in another band. I know. Called Lionel Driftwood and the Pile Drivers. Uh, there you go again. Not so good. No. 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 They had... A, <laughs> <laughs> Their first album was called We Forgot to Put a Hole in the Middle. <laughs> Never got played by anybody. No. I could tell you a great story about Neil Young. Oh. Neil Young had written, which came first, Harvest or After the Gold Mine or whatever it's called? Uh, after the Gold Rush came yeah, which, after All right, Harvest. so Harvest first. Hmm. So he brings in Harvest to the recording company and he said, this is the best album ever made in the world Ever. He said that. He's, Neil Young said that. About himself. Yeah. <laughs> Shy little fella. Yeah. So he puts it on and they agree. They go, this is hmm. absolutely one of the greatest albums of all time. Hmm. So he said, so what I want is a cover. This is all true, I promise you. He said, I want the cover to disintegrate because it's the best album of all time. No one will ever want to play another record. Probably taking a few drugs at this stage. So the recording company go, you know, he's a big artist. We've got to at least look into it. Mm. So look into you it. Check it out. Yeah. Well, it costs millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and they don't want to offend Neil Young because he's a big artist. Mm. They're thinking, what can we do? And they're having conferences and conferences about it. And, oh, I don't know how we're going to get over this. We're going to get over this. This young intern said, I have an idea. Mm. He told them the idea. They said, that's fantastic. Mm. Let's go with it. Mm. What do you think about that? What was the idea? <laughs> oh, you want me to start the idea? <laughs> okay. You can start with the idea. Yeah. They went to him and said, Neil, <laughs> Neil, you're absolutely right. This is the best album of all time. Yes. And you're right. No one will ever want to play another record after it. But, Neil, what about when you make your next record? Oh, uh, see? And he said, mm. that's right. Forget the idea. Yeah, good. That's true. Yeah. Shall we go to a break? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. We haven't been on for two hours. We should. Stop. I'm going to go to the toilet. Me too. All right. Let's Sword go. fights. You're listening to Sons of Sunbury. Hello. This is Sons of Sunbury. Most people over 40 or under 40 have only ever seen the Beatles dead. Because Lennon died in 80. Yes. And... Um, George. George died of some sort of cancer of the clitoris or something, whatever close. you go. Throat, right, but <laughs> yes. right, close. Yeah. Um, when did he die? How old was he? Uh, he was, uh, oh, goodness me. Sorry to throw something at you. Yeah, I thought I Well, I can tell you. Oh, well, He was 104. <laughs> no, that's not right. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. He was, he was 60, 60. Oh, well, that's not old. Two, no, 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 it wasn't old. No. You see, and that's what comes from being a rhythm guitarist. He's lead guitarist. That's what I said. <laughs> right. But, you know, when he died, his wife swears she saw his body rise mm. and his spirit went up because he's into the... That's what will happen when you pass away on an escalator. Because <laughs> he, he's into the Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. I, we've got their temple around the corner from our house. Have you, yeah, really? In Albert Park, yeah. I go around, I say, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. I introduce them. 
Are they thriving? Or is, how's it going? It's thriving. Right. It's right. Big business. Is it big business? Breeding like rabbits. Are they? Wow. Breeding like rabbits. Because uh, they've also got one in um, Chaganini. They got, they've got a... Chaganina. Is it? I think Traganini was a poet or a painter. <laughs> Isn't that the Aboriginal, Midnight Oil single? Aboriginal painter or poet. But you're thinking of Traganina, yeah. which is the home of um, immigration in Australia. Yes, that's right. It's Aboriginal for more tattoos than teeth. It, it, I, yes, all right. You've used that for another place, but as I said, you're very green. <laughs> I, no, I recycle my material. You do. <laughs> that's right. Yes, you do. Uh, but that's okay. So anyway, back to Ringo. All right, I just discovered we haven't got your mic on. Does that matter? No, you have. I'm, I'm hearing myself perfectly. Okay. Can't you hear me? I can. Now, back to Ringo. Yeah. So Ringo mm. was not the first drummer of the Beatles. No, we've established that. Because originally they weren't even going to have a drummer. They were just going to have a tuba player. <laughs> right. This is true. Yeah. And what happened was the guy dropped his tuba. Yeah. Have you ever heard a tuba dropped? No. Oh, it's a cacophony. Yes. A lot of noise. Bang, bang, boom, Ooh. boom, boom, it says. And they said, <gasps> Eureka, they said. Yeah. We should get a drummer. Let's get rid of the tuba player. Yeah. And you know what the tuba player said? What? <laughs> he was upset. Okay. He was <laughs> forlorn. Yeah. He was in a state of tristesse. Oh, that's a good word. It is a good that's word. Where did you learn that word? I learned that word from Father Bob, my friend Father Bob. He taught me about that word. It's a great word, tristesse. It means a blanket of sadness. It's a lovely saying. There's a really it's nice not a thing. saying. It's a word. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's a real, real word. word. No, all right. it's a lovely explanation. Blanket of sadness. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you. And it's a nice. So anyway. So they got rid of the tuba player. Oh, they got a lot of complaints from tuba players around oh, England. Oh, The letters. Oh. oh. I did a joke about Alzheimer's disease once, and the letters I got, of course, they'd forgot to put the um, anything in the envelope, but um, and the stamp was missing. Not so – okay. So anyway, um, they got rid of – have I done my Alzheimer's joke? So anyway, <laughs> they, they got rid of the tuba player. Then they got Pete Best, and then nobody liked his name. No. Because it intimated that he was superior. Yeah. So they got rid of him and they thought, we need something with an O. You know, some O is happy. It's, you know, like Jumbo. Everyone loves a Jumbo. Yeah. So they got Fatso McGee. <laughs> Didn't work. No. N couldn't play a note. Yeah. His drums were out of tune. No. <laughs> I don't know where you're it's, getting this, but go it's on. shocking. No, it's true. It's going well. I read this. I read this. And, and then after Fatso McGee, yeah. right, they got Piggy Malone. <laughs> Right. Again, not so good. No. He'd never actually played before. No. But he delivered coffee one day and they said, Piggy, he, he said, Yeah. Piggy, can you play the drums? No. <laughs> they said, perfect. Because they were sick of Pete Best being better, you yeah. see. Yeah. So they want someone worst. They should have chosen someone called Pete Worst. Yeah, that's right. But they didn't. No. That's why they went to Germany looking for worst. <laughs> you see? Yes. Right? And when they were in Germany, mm -hmm. And they found a guy that was cleaning the gully trap sump in a sex dungeon in Hamburg right. by the name of Ringo. Right. His real name wasn't Ringo. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What is it? Happy. <laughs> Happy? <laughs> yes. Happy star. No, not star either. Don't be fooled. No. His name was Happy Norman. Happy Norman. <laughs> That's right. And he was playing the drums right. on at the time in the street on ice cream tubs. <laughs> and, and because yes. George Harrison loved mm. ice cream because of his throat. He had yeah. sore throat all the time. He did. What did he die of? Cancer of the throat. <gasps> see? There Who you go. Knew? Should have had more ice cream. You see? Yeah. There you are. So ice they found this ice tub smacking moron. Right. And they said, your name sucks. Yeah. Right. Happy. So, happy. So what we need to do is change your name. What do you think you should change it to? Right. And they said, well, first of all, they came up with Pinkus McFlaps. <laughs> Not like so it. good. He didn't like, like it. it. I don't like that. No, you didn't like it? No. He didn't like it either. <laughs> and they said, what name really rings through? Oh, they, he said, I like ring. <laughs> oh, is that how it came? Yeah. What name ring? And, and that's, he not bad. that's not bad. He stopped mid-sentence. Yeah. He put, a, he put an interstitial in the sentence. Wow. And he said to them, ring I like. Ring. But a, a ring doesn't sound good. Like, yeah. a, you know, ring me later. What, yeah. what, what's my surname? Yeah. And they said, well, let's put an O on the end. Because we were looking for someone. We had Patso before. <laughs> yes. Right. So let's go Ringo. All right. Oh, I like that, he said. Oh, good. And then they said, okay, what about a surname? Yeah. 
Shitface he came up with was the first one. <laughs> Ringo Shitface. Yeah, Ringo Shitface. And mind you, it looked good. <laughs> on the drum head? Around. Because yes. they yeah. cut the hole in the drum. That's right. And they ride it around the edge of That's the right. drum. Yeah, good. Right? Ringo Shitface. <laughs> but they, it. they already had the Beatles written. Ah, on, on, on the drum. Yeah. So they, could, they had no room. They had room for Ringo, <laughs> yeah. but they couldn't fit all the shit face in. No, they no. could fit shit. <laughs> so Ringo shit, he fell out of love. <laughs> he fell out of love with it. He was not, as they say in the French, enamored oh, with it. No. So he said, we need a four-letter word. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which they already had. They, yeah. So why would they want another one? They came they didn't up, like it. They came up with a lot of four-letter words. Yeah, I bet. None of which would have allowed them to play underage concerts. <laughs> That's right. You know, they had okay. Ringo Cock, you can't oh, have that. A number of them. Yes. And then he said, you know what? One day, if this goes well... One day we could all be stars. Ah. They said that's a five-letter word. So they put that to one side. <laughs> right. Okay. That, so that was a bad move. That could have saved them a lot of time. Ringo Fire was the next one. <laughs> but that then intimated he wasn't going to last long in the band. That's right. Which also was an <laughs> omen. He, and uh, he said, what about Ringo Omen? Which is also a four-letter word. <laughs> and then he said, Ringo Best. Yes. Yeah. And they said, no, we've had one of them. Yeah. That's why you're here. Yeah, that's You right. and Fatso and yeah. Humpy McGee. We got rid of all those guys picking up the flaps. All gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But then, right, yeah. then they had Ringo, they had nothing, they needed a full letter word, and George Harrison said, yeah. I'm going to go and get a drink while you guys think of a name, right? right? Yeah. And then Paul McCartley <laughs> said, right. Yeah. I'll come with you. Yes, I'll come with you. <laughs> All right. And John Lennon said, I'm going to go onto this Japanese dating site <laughs> yes. and try and see if I can get a mail order bride. <laughs> Which is what he did. And Ringo said, oh, no. Yeah. He said, that's who I'll look for. Oh, no. See? You, oh, you. You with the history. We need to rewrite Rick, Wikipedia. This is No, better. no, this, this is, is true. a better story. This is exactly what happened. All right. No, there's, no, there's no falsehood in this. This is not a work of fiction. All right. This is not, like, not your resume. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. You know, when I go for jobs, by the way, I always turn up in a wheelchair. Yeah. And they say... What would you say your best quality? I like to push myself. <laughs> That's what I say. It's great. And then, and I don't, I don't oil it either. So oh. if they don't, if I don't get the job, there's nothing as sad as me squeaking out of the door. Oh, well, it's funny because Ringo Squeak was his suggestion, <laughs> but that then suggested he could sing. Yeah, which he couldn't. No, he could not. Worst singer. Yeah, shocking yeah. singer. He seriously. Audiences used to, when he sang, they used to scream out, less. <laughs> yes, good. Shocking. Yeah. He had a gig at the School of the Deaf, the worst singer. So he said, I've got to do something about this. So one night he was lying on his back unconscious. <laughs> and he came to looking up at the sky. Uh -huh. And guess what he saw in the sky? The moon. Ringo moon. Ringo moon, he There says. we go. And Paul McCartney said, I like it. I like it. Yeah. But I don't love it. <laughs> and he's changed from uh, Liverpudlian to Cockney. Yeah. All right. And, and George Harrison's George probably Harrison German. said, <laughs> I also like, not so much. <laughs> yes. I don't know what that was. I said a bit Chinese of it. Was it? Yeah, a little German Chinese. I think a bit of Indian in there, actually. Oh. Anywho, uh, so they were thinking that they, like, they liked Moon. What's not to like? <laughs> That's right. 220,000 miles away. Yeah. You know, if you strung with DNA together in your body, you go backwards and forwards to the moon 20 times. Really? Oh, yeah. Little science fact. There yeah. you are. You learn a lot on this show. Oh, it's a factorama. All right. So, anywho, they're thinking moon, Ringo Galaxy, again, wouldn't fit on the drum. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. Because we had the Beatles. Yeah. We had Ringo, Galaxy, no. Because no. the X and the Y were crossing over the E and the S at the end of Beatles. So, it was, looks like Bidex. Yeah. Which nope. actually gave the Beatniks, which became a Beatles tribute band, but how could they know? You know. At that point, they wouldn't no, know. No. They would need to be some sort of sir. So he said, wait a minute, I've got it. Ringo Scar. <laughs> oh, that's rock and roll, right? Hey, you see, rock and roll. Oh. Ringo Scar. And then George Harrison said, ah. still got the sore throat, mm. hitting a raw nerve, you know, Let's just say you'll never be the best in this band. So, because you really are a talentless moron. Yeah. With the friggin' mustache, what is the deal? Yeah. Let's call you, and the honker. Yeah. The nose, the mustache. Yeah. Why would you want to under underline that? No. no. Shocking. Yeah. Head like as Robber's dog. Yeah. And they said, let's call him Star. 
Ah. And that's what they did. And they changed his name at the council. Yeah. And they registered him. Yeah. Got a lead and everything. Yes. Ringo Starr. Wow. Right? Yeah. And he was the first drummer that basically really made it with the Beatles. Pete Best played with the Beatles. Yeah. He didn't make it. No, he didn't make it. You know what he made? What? Nothing. No, he didn't. Because what he did do, he made a name where, for example, if you were in my 80s synth band and I kicked you out, I'd say we did a Pete Best on him. So that's all he made was a reputation for being kicked out. But when they did the anthology, the video anthology, remember that, on TV? They wanted to use his recordings and he said no and they should give me $4 million. It's a very specific amount. Yeah. He should have said $4 million and eight. Yeah. $4 million and eight dollars. Yeah. What's the eight for, they would have said? Wiggle room. <laughs> In case I want to come down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll take Very four. hard to go up and take negotiate. Take $4 million. All right. All yeah. right, we're happy with that. You say, no, I, don't want, I want more. Yeah. This is not how to negotiate. No, you don't say I want you less. You start with more than you want. Yeah. You come down. Yeah. And that way they feel good, you feel good. Everyone walks away, our winner. Oh. All right, so that's good. We, we're, it's, so now we know the background. We're nearly of the, of three the hours into the and we're out of time. <laughs> we're just okay, doing... what would you say their greatest song was, Ken? Ah, I, I'm a big fan of Penny well, Lane. Well, that's incorrect. Penny Lane. It's a nice song. Yeah. Is it because of the strings? No, it's it's uh, it just seems to have everything. Everything. Yeah, I like a a Beatles song. What does it have? It's got eight pianos on it. Did you know that? That's a lot of pianos. You have to listen to the them pulled apart, but there are eight pianos on that. Hard, because there were only four Beatles. They had to get out. The monkeys came in and now I'm starting to do what you're doing. Now I'm starting to make up my own stories. No, but you, the monkeys will get us to, to speak the, the truth. It'll get us to the next segment. It's not a segment. It's a podcast. It's our next episode. It's, it's, we're talking about the monkeys later, not now. No. Another time, next week. It's got brass. It's got yes. great harmonies. Strings. Incredible melody. Cello. Oh, it might have a cello. It does. Uh, you Penny Lane, I'm yes, talking about. Yes, absolutely. Not, I know not, the song you're talking about. Alan or Rigby. Do, 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 no, it's definitely yeah. strings. Oh. Yeah. You've Perfect never been pitch. right about anything so far, though. Listen to it. Oh. Well, I have listened to it because that's why it's my favourite song. So, look, all he's done is walk down the street and look at people. Who? Oh, oh, in the song. There's a bar. The lyrically. You know, there's a fireman. He's just looked at people yeah. and written a verse about him. And well, what's your favourite? A Day in a Life. Ah, that is a good choice. Very good Better choice. than yours? Uh, no, but it's a good choice. You think Penny Lane, that absolute drivel, is better than A Day in the Life? You know, I shouldn't tell you this because it, it's slightly illegal, but I have the <laughs> um, I have the four tracks of A Day in the Life. And I listened to it, pulled them apart, found out you know what was on each track. Too much time in your hands. And then I decided I could do a better mix than George Martin. So I did one, sent it to Brian Mannix, and he said he was never going to talk to me again if I ever played it to anyone. It was that bad, he said. I, I, I thought that I could add things to the Beatles. You were threatened by Brian Mannix. <laughs> yes, that's right. Huh. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't sleep well that night, did you? Uh, no, no, day in the life shits on it. But all right, okay, so that's that question asked and gotten wrong. Mm. So my next question to you as mm. a Beatles historian, yes, what was their greatest T-shirt? <laughs> I, made by them. I've, 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 I've stumped you. Well, you haven't. I, I like, I like, there's a picture of George Harrison wearing a, a T-shirt saying, stamp out the Beatles. Ah. I like that. I like that. I think that's ironic. What did you... No, it's, it's not. It's absolutely not ironic. <laughs> Is it a metaphor? <laughs> sure. Why oh. not? Um, just pick other words and we'll say yes as okay. well. Okay. Analogy. When, when he said, we're bigger than Jesus. Yes. What did you think about that? As a God-fearing man. Yeah. Uh, I, I agreed. <laughs> you agreed. <laughs> yes. Well, they're very clever because when he did that, a lot of people burnt their records and then later had to buy them back again. So they sold double the amount. That, he actually said that. It's his great idea. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people burnt their Bibles. Wh who? Well, <laughs> people who thought the Beatles were better. Oh, burnt, burnt their, their Bibles. Bibles. Yeah, and then, of course. You, they had to go and buy them back. Yeah. Or rent a hotel room. I was going to say. Yeah. That's right. That's Gideon's Bible. Ever seen one? A Gideon's Bible? Ever seen a Gideon? 
No. How do they get in there? I don't even know how Gideon. That's where their name comes from. Is that right? Yeah. Who, who wrote Gideon. the book? We get in. Oh, we get in. So Gideon wrote it. No. Oh. He didn't write the Bible. No. But he had a signed copy. <laughs> Wow. From the author. Yeah. I have you don't a, see a lot of those. No, I have a theory on, on, on the Bible. I believe that the Bible was written by a Ron El Hubbard of those days. Scientology. Yeah, but not him. Not him. Not Ron. No, go because back. Because he was very back, young man. Yeah, go back to the Bible days. Okay. Whoever it is, it's writing it. Yeah. He just made them. up things. You think? And everyone went, this is a good book. And now people are going, oh, that's the gospel. But It was a bestseller back then. I think it was just a good book. Sold good eight copies. It's got, that's right. Back then that was good. Hardback. You could get two versions, the softback and the hardback. <laughs> yes. And the illustrated. Ah. They had the talking book. Back then in the records, you hired a guy. He'd come over. <laughs> and read it. Read the whole thing to you. While you're walking around. Very long. Wow. Yes. That's a good job. Yeah, it was a good job. Yeah. I used to do that. At the School of the Blind, I used to read talking books into. I did it at the School of the Deaf too, which is similar, but you just had to shout the whole thing <laughs> hard on the throat, which actually leads me back to George Harrison. George Harrison. Exactly. So he did My Sweet Lord mm. uh, with Sister Mary Euthanasia or something. Janet Mead. Janet Mead. Sister Janet Mead. Was that her? That's the Australian nun. What? Well, there's no nun on the record. Well, who am I thinking of? I Who's the lady that sang the, the nun song? You know, the... Sister Janet Mead. She sang... Um... Dominic. Is that it? <laughs> no? <laughs> no, she didn't go... <laughs> no, there was a um, Sister Mary something. This is Mary Sunshine. No, she's from Chicago. Um, Teresa? Oh, she had Sister a Mary s- Teresa? song out. Um, no. Um, no. Twisted Sister. It was something about the the Bible or the... Oh, God. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right. So there were the Beatles, and they were wonderful, and they put a lot of great songs out, and we don't agree on what their best song was. Mm. Why did they break up? This is um, We're going to close with this. Yep. Why did they break up, Ken? What happened to the Beatles? Okay. Um, well, I have some interesting facts about that. About time. Yeah. <laughs> because as everyone says, Yoko broke up the Beatles. She says that. Everyone said that. She didn't say it. They said it. She didn't say much at all. No, she, she did not. She really did. Yeah. Not a chatty chick. She used to say, uh, Beatles should sing more rock. And, John, and Paul McCartney would say, it's actually the Beatles love, not Beatles. But when everyone thought they broke up, which is fair call, because Abbey Road, last song, last album, you know, everyone thinks great album because they're obviously going to make it their last album because it's so great and they want it to be perfect. But then there, a tape has just risen um, of them talking at a business meeting where they're talking about doing a new album and John says, Paul and I will have five songs each. Mm. Uh, George can have four and Ringo can have two if he wants them. Mm. So there was another album coming up. Mm. So they didn't break up when everyone thought. So, you know, the, the answer to that is who knows. When did they break up? 1970. And 50 years later now, they've just gone number one all over the world again with Abbey Road. 50 years after they broke up. So they've gone number one all the wo- all over the world next year. <laughs> uh, You're an idiot. What are you talking about? 69. 69 that Abbey Road came out. That's right. 70, next, what about the White next album? year, 68. No. Yeah. What about Let It Be? It's 1970. Ah, so Let It Be was after they'd broken up. Yeah. No. No. That can't be right. <laughs> I better check you my facts. You know what your facts are? Skew if. <laughs> no, they recorded Let It Be first. Hmm. Let it be first. Yeah, no, just let Worst it be. Worst title ever. <laughs> let it be best. That was Fatso McGee's first thought. <laughs> let it the be original best. drummer. <clears throat> let it be best. Yes. Um, and then they said that was terrible. What? Let it be. Terrible album. Terrible. You know, for them, terrible. And so then they did Abbey Road, but they released Abbey Road first and then let it be. I thought the White Album was the last one. No, the White Album was 1968. You know the White Album was only the White Album until you got it dirty? And then what was it called? Off-white. Well, the besmirched. (laughs) 
Right? Like a coffee ring. <laughs> yeah, who put this coffee on my exactly. my white album? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't have anything on the on the cover except white. It was embossed. The Beatles were embossed. Uh, Remember that? Well, I was deaf. I couldn't hear that. <laughs> no, that's right. And Sergeant Pepper means nothing to you? Not a big album for oh, you? Oh, no, it means a lot to me. Big album? Yeah, nice album. Not the best. What's your favourite album? Magical Mystery Tour. It is? What? I, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. <laughs> you I like, apologise. You like Blue Jay Way. I don't like every track on every album. All right. In fact, even on Abbey Road, which some claim to be their best, yes. there are songs on that I don't enjoy. Really? What what song? I don't like Maxwell's Silver Hammer. Really? Don't like it. And yet it took them longer than any other track yeah, to record. Yeah, because they didn't want to record it. Only Paul wanted to. Well, there you are. And we're going to play some of Paul's granny's music, they said. Yeah, exactly. It was a shit <clears throat> song. Yeah. And you know who really hated it? Who? Fatso McGee. <laughs> Did he? He rang him. <laughs> See. They took a call from him. I don't they like it. Speak to I don't like it at all, he said. <laughs> they didn't speak to Pete Best for 50 years, and but Fatso McGee rings up and he's through. The problem was Pete Best lost his phone. <laughs> oh, you see. And they didn't have mobile phones in there. Things you don't know. No. Well, then you don't have mobile phones. So you lose a, a phone in your house. It's gone. It's different. Oh. You can't replace that. Because you, you, the jack's gone and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you'd ring, you'd ring up the telecom people. British well, telecom. How? You couldn't. Well, there's, you see, there's the rub. Yeah. You'd have to go down to the public phone. Yeah. And ring them. Yeah. Superman, get out. I've got to make a call. And you ring British Telecom, you've got to come around and fix my phone. And they'd come round eventually. To the telephone box. Yes, you see, and there was the confusion. They yeah. would come to the telephone box. But this has already got a phone, they would say. And they'd go. Every week. This, yeah, that's right. They'd Obviously. leave and you'd say, no, I don't want to at the telephone box. That's right. I want you to come to my house. Yeah. And they'd eventually come to the house and they'd put the phone back in. But by that time, it was too late. That's right. They'd already recorded the song. That's right. Correct. I tell you something about Abbey Road that does impress me. Have you ever separated Paul's bass line yeah. in something? Oh, beautiful. You like really it? Really beautiful. Do you wish you could play like that? I, I do wish I could play so like that. So does everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it, our Beatles tribute. This is our first inaugural or inaudible episode, depending on how many people. We didn't get to the movies, but I. I don't think we can now. We'll be up to four hours. If It'll we be do crazy. Movie. Yeah, crazy talk. But that's all right. That's good. We had a great crazy day. Crazy talk was actually the pit boss in that casino that I worked <laughs> in in Las Vegas. Isn't that Neil Young's band? Yes, Neil no, Young and crazy, crazy House. Talk. No, that's that's what's the name's band. <laughs> yes, exactly. Crazy horse. Yes. Yeah. So all have right. you had fun? Fun's a big word. All right. Let's just say I've. Be glad you're here. I killed some time without using a gun. Oh, that's, oh, someone's sending me a text. Isn't that Our good? first review's in. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone. 